before, when I was backstage, I really had like a panic attack. And I was like hyperventilating. And all the people who were working backstage, they're like, you don't have to go on stage if you don't want to. And, and I, they, it was embarrassing. But uh, like five minutes before I had to go on, I just said, okay, I think I can go on. And I just, for some, I just decided to go up there and sing. And it, I ended up winning the kids division. And I, and I just couldn't believe it. You know, they, they were, the audience was so supportive. And I, I think that they realized how scared and nervous I was because I was standing like this, just like, ah. <laughs> and, so it was, it was an interesting experience, but it was, I was like, I can't believe, I, I, I really felt like they only let me win because they felt bad for me. And, <laughs> but, you know, I, eventually yeah, when yeah, I went yeah. to Starship, uh, I went to go audition and, uh, it was just the same thing. I was like, I'm not very good. It's not like I'm going to make a special audition or anything. And I didn't the first time I auditioned. But then I'm, I'm, there was a, later on, a friend of ours um, invited us again to perform our audition. I was able to make it on to the show. And when I, you know, there were like three rounds on that. And for the last round, I don't even, see, I don't even know how I got on that because the semifinal, I felt so bad because I thought the other two performers during the semifinals were so much better than me. And I felt so bad. I was like, they don't, I don't deserve to be here compared to those girls. I'm, I'm not supposed to be here at the finals. But, you know, that only motivated me to make sure that I did my best. So I didn't let those, those, those amazingly talented girls down. I didn't want to let them down and say, it's like, why did he make it there? It's like, I wanted to make sure that, no, I'm going to make sure I do my best so that I didn't just go here and you didn't for no reason kind of thing with that. I don't know if that's confusing, but when I went, when we went, I, I went to this, uh, the final and I, I really worked hard and did my best. And I ended up winning, you know, the kids division again in Star Search. And I was so happy and excited. But then I saw the girl who lost and she was so, she was crying. And I felt so bad. And I started getting really upset, and <laughs> I, my, my, um, my, tu my the, 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 mm. the, like, tutor person, because I was a minor, who was there trying to calm me down, <laughs> she was just saying, you know, it's okay, and she's, she's fine, and I was like, no, she's not, she was, I was like, she should have won, and I should have won, and this was right after I won, and then, then my, my, the tutor started crying, because she felt bad. <laughs> Just, it was a really interesting, I, mean, I don't know, but I was just so upset. I was like, why did I win? I didn't deserve to, but, you know, uh, you know, it's just funny to look back on because, you know, I, I became good friends with her after too, but, you know, after Star Search, I felt like because of that, it gave me hope in music and being able to sing. I was like, well, I don't know why I want or anything, but maybe I, maybe music really does do something for because music does so much for me, and there's just something that about it that makes me feel so good. And I wonder if other people can feel that, because I can feel it when other people sing. And it'd be great if I could do more of that. But there was a, a, a next time, they did another thing with Star Search, and the second time I went there, as I was performing, I, I'd gotten really sick before, and it lasted for a few months. I, I had a really bad case of bronchitis, and then I had like appendicitis and stuff that all in that short amount of time. And then I went on to the next part of Star Search, and I never got better for some reason. And I was really struggling with my voice, and we we're like, oh, it's just a cold. And after a few weeks, it kept getting worse, and I was really having a difficult time singing. I was like, I wonder what's happening here. So uh, we went to an ear, nose, throat doctor who was really well known in LA, and actually the assistant at the time, he happened to be the doctor on American Idol later on, so it's kind of funny to run into him. But uh, they they scooped my throat, and we found out that I had a, a paralyzed vocal cord. And I was like, well, what does that mean? <laughs> I was 13, I'd never heard of a paralyzed vocal cord before. And I didn't know what that meant. 
but they're like, well, it's where one of your vocal cords isn't moving. And I was like, uh, I'm trying to sing. I'm on a, a show right now. I don't know what, the, what am I supposed to do then. And they're like, well, we're you know we've never really seen this in kids before. And I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> that sounds even better. <laughs> but they said, well, you can either what we usually do is surgery. But you know, since you're a singer, that's really risky, and it might you know damage your singing ability permanently. And I was like, well, I don't want that to happen. So they said, well, the other thing you can do is physical ther uh, voice therapy, but we, don't, we can't guarantee that it will do anything for you. But you, that, it's definitely worth a shot. I mean, it's, it's helped before. So I was kind of like, well, is that the end of music? For me, I, I don't know what that means. I really was really, I was really distraught to hear that. And I, it, I was really, I was feeling really down during that time because I was like, I don't know what to do. And they said, you know, I was like, well, how long will voice therapy take? They're like, a year, two years, more than that. We don't know and before you will see the results. And I was just so, I was feeling so down. And after SARS, my voice was just getting worse. And I it got to a point where I could only sing one or two songs at a time. It's like, well, if, how am I supposed to be a singer if I can barely get through one song? So uh, that's during that time, it was just too hard to sing. And I was like, well, I think I guess that's a sign that I'm not supposed to be doing music. I guess that's a sign that I'm supposed to be doing something else. And I just kind of stopped doing music for a couple of years because things kind of died down. I couldn't really do anything. <laughs> I, you know, I, I do things when people would ask me every now and then, but I couldn't really do much more than that. So I just was going back to school and was kind of living a normal life of a teenager, I guess, and just kind of trying to figure out what am I supposed to do with my life as a, as a kid. And that's where I was like, you know, as I was a teenager, I was getting really like frustrated with myself because I was like, what am I supposed to do with myself? Because I always wanted to do music, but I don't know how I'm supposed to do it anymore. So I guess I'm just going to try and find other ways and see what else I can do with uh, see if I have any other skills, because I always thought, I'm not good at anything. I, I, mean, I didn't even think I was good at music. But, you know, now I'm so grateful to be able to, you know, perform and do music. But, you know, I, I was, it was like the, it was the summer of, before, you know, the American Idol auditions and stuff, and I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with myself, because all my friends had jobs, and, they're all, you know, all these geniuses and doing great in school, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm cool, <laughs> I'm not into any of that. But I, I finally was so happy because one of my friends <laughs> invited me to start working at an amphitheater at Murray Park. And I was like, yes, I have a job, finally. And I felt like, yes, I'm moving ahead in life, I have something to do with myself and be productive and make some money. And then the auditions for American Idol came up. And everyone's like, you should go audition there, you should go audition. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> like, I'm getting good for that. And it's like, I'm, I can't even get, I wouldn't be able to get through that show. You need to be able to sing well, first of all, and sing for a long time. You're out that show lasts a long time. And I was like, I'd be just wasting my, my parents' money and my time going out to audition. But something kept saying, David, it's like the more I would, people would say, yeah, go audition, I'd be like, yeah, whatever, and just ignore them. The more I'd hear it, the more I'd feel, David, you should go audition. And I, at first I'd just ignore it. I was like, oh, I don't, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but then it, it, would, it got to the point where it wouldn't leave me alone. And I was like, man, I feel like I should go audition. And it wasn't, I wasn't feeling like, well, I was like, well, I'd, what if I waste my time? I'd have to quit my job if I went, because I wasn't allowed to miss any, like a certain amount of time. But there's just a point where I was like, I'm, I have a feeling like I should go do this. And it's not like I'm gonna get past the first round or anything, but for some reason I need to audition. And so what I did is actually, I said a prayer. And I just asked, I asked God and said, uh, you know, Lord, I feel, I keep feeling like I need to go do this, and I don't know why, but I just thought I would bring it to you, and I was like, why would he care about a little, some 
kid kneeling down in his room who doesn't even know what to do with himself in 10th grade. But I decided to ask him. And after that, I felt so strong and I knew that I had to go audition. And I don't even know why. I was like, I'm not sure, because it's not like I'm going to get very far in it or anything. 